they face superbugs and danger of infection, extreme medicine and extreme treatment. This time, doctors on the front line comes from Armenia, where they're exposed to their patients' new strain of drug-resistant tuberculosis. It's the killer that attacks the lungs, called the White Plague, the Royal Touch, Consumption, TB tuberculosis has been stalking humans for millennia. If untreated, patients die from suffocation as excess blood and phlegm clog the lungs. Midway into the last century, TB killed writers D.H. Lawrence and George Orwell, Gone with the Wind actress Vivian Lee and US First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Then came the miracle antibiotic streptomycin. TB seemed to be joining polio and smallpox as a disease consigned to history. But now it's back with a vengeance in a more lethal, drug-resistant strain. If we look at TB on the whole, there's about 9 million new cases. 1.8 million people die from it. 500,000 of them have a drug-resistant tuberculosis. Of those people, 150,000 roughly die, the WHO estimates. That means 350,000 don't die. Those people continue to transmit this in the community. It, it is an airborne disease, so it can flow from place to place and it can, it can cross borders. It knows no borders, as it were. Nowhere is safe. TB kills almost as many as HIV AIDS. But according to the World Health Organization, the highest rates of multidrug resistant TB are in China, India, and the former Soviet bloc countries. Armenia, a Christian former Soviet republic bordering Turkey, is struggling to cope with the resurgence of the drug-resistant TB strains. Even for a doctor, the attempted cure is as bad as the disease itself. If I get infected, maybe I will not go for this treatment. Rather, I will die. Because it's too much, it's too much. I, I can feel for the patient. Dr. Shahidul Islam from Bangladesh came to Armenia to work with Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF, two years ago. Islam had worked with TB patients at home and in Africa, but Armenia was to be his first contact with the drug-resistant strain. At the beginning, it was a little bit difficult. You can imagine here uh, the doctors, national doctors, uh, uh, they are quite old, older than me. Like uh, I am uh, 31 years old. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience on multi drug resistant tuberculosis, but uh, there are some doctors, they have experience. So it takes a little bit time to understand clinic doctors as well as, uh, as the patients also. MSF came to Armenia in 1988 when a devastating earthquake killed 25,000 and left half a million homeless. The organization stayed on after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 when Armenia became independent. In the mid-90s, doctors began to find that TB patients weren't responding to treatment. By 2005, MSF was committing all its resources to helping the country cope with the escalation in cases of multi-drug resistant TB. One of the major challenges has been helping Armenia make the transition from centralized Soviet-style hospital treatment for TB to outpatient care in clinics. Dr. Shahidul Islam's role is to ensure that drug-resistant TB patients get the right treatment. He works closely with Armenian doctors traveling to clinics around the country. Today, he's going with a medical team to the country's main TB hospital in Abovyan, a town 30 kilometers north of the capital, Yerevan. Here, there is a 75-bed drug-resistant TB unit for the sufferers. With highly contagious patients, the medical staff must wear masks all the time. Stigma is attached to the disease, and most patients on the wards didn't want their faces to be shown in our film. But a few gave permission, and Haratun Zograbian and Alexander Venesian were among them. Haratun Zograbian is a 39-year-old construction worker and father of two, 
who says he'd never had a sick day in his life until last summer. He experienced a dramatic weight loss, followed by severe chest pains. A checkup at Abovian revealed he had the drug-resistant strain. Harutyun has no idea where he contracted it. He's been here for two months. To treat patients diagnosed with drug-resistant strains, doctors administer a mixture of 16 drugs a day orally and by injection. The drugs are toxic, with debilitating side effects such as constant nausea, psychiatric disorders, loss of hearing and organ failure. For one in five patients, the ordeal is simply not worth it, and they give up treatment. Harrod Thun has endured the treatment. He's convinced he'll be cured and return to his family soon. In March, Harutun was still in Abovian. He'll go home when his sputum shows he's not infectious anymore. 42-year-old journalist Alexandre Hovanesian was diagnosed in 1996 with the treatable type of TB which can be cured in six months. But he didn't complete his courses, didn't feed himself properly, and his infrequent visits to the hospital all contributed to creating resistance to the drugs. In spite of this, Dr. Shahidul Islam is confident Alexan can recover. Though uh, all the patient has some difficulty to taking this uh, horrible big amount of drugs, but I think uh, as he uh, uh, tolerates drugs quite well, and he is adherent to his treatment, and also from his side also you can see some motivation that he's feeling improvement clinically. So I think uh, this treatment will work for him. TB these days is closely allied with poverty. In Armenia, more than a third of the population lives on less than four US dollars a day. In 2006, WHO reported that one in 10 patients in Armenia had contracted the drug-resistant strain, the 10th highest rate in the world. Harvard professor and TB specialist Dr. Salman Kashavji is the former chief of WHO's Greenlight Committee. It was set up in 2000 to coordinate the fight against drug-resistant TB. Tuberculosis is not a disease that's easy to treat uh, compared to other, other diseases. So even the first-line regimen, which is reasonably strong, takes six months. And you have to make sure that people are getting the medicines regularly for six months, and they're taking all of them, because if they're not taking all of them, you're going to get resistance. So most programs in the world, including in the, in, the, in the Soviet Union, were using four drugs. When that system collapsed and drugs weren't available, doctors were using two or drugs or one drug or three drugs. Now you may think, well, that's irresponsible. Why would anyone do that if we know that you know, you're going to have resistance? Well, you do get a good cure rate with one drug. You get 55%. That's better than the 25% that you get if you do nothing. Minas, not his real name, is a 51-year-old electrician who lives with his son and daughter in Yerevan. He was working in Russia when he was diagnosed with TB in 2004. After four months in hospital in Russia, he was told he was cured and went back to work. Four years later, his TB was back with a vengeance. He'd developed the multi-drug resistant strain. So he came home to Armenia to be treated by MSF. For him, the drug's effects were brutal. <laughs> The drugs are toxic. There are some drugs that can cause people to be depressed. There are some drugs that, in rare cases, can cause people to have seizures. And some of these drugs are old. One of the drugs was created in the 1980s, but it was created for other things. It just happened to work for TB. But that was the last time a drug that worked well for TB was created. That was 30 years ago. Minas's heart couldn't withstand the treatment. The clinic was forced to stop the 16 drugs a day. So if the disease develops, his chances of survival are non-existent. 
Too weak to go out, he spends his days alone, drinking coffee and smoking. He's suicidally depressed. Margarita Zalibekian, a trained social worker, didn't know much about drug-resistant TB when she joined MSF three years ago. She says it was probably a good thing, as she wasn't afraid of the disease. She visits patients at the end of their tether. She also says their desire to keep the disease secret adds to their suffering. Dr. Shai Dolislam came to Armenia two years ago from TB clinics in Africa to work with drug-resistant patients. He'll finish his Armenian assignment in June 2011. He could go back into private practice, he says, to take up a better paid, less risky position. But it's likely he'll stay at the extreme end of medicine somewhere in the world. It's not a fantastically paid job, but at least we have satisfaction. What you are doing in the field, I can see really I am helping the people. If we can help them, I mean, the, if we can react on time, we can control the disease. As drug-resistant TB gained a strong foothold, the Armenian government created the National TB Programme. It's beset with problems. But not all patients are from low-income families. Margarita Zalibekian visits Mariam Davtian in her home in Zvartnots, a suburb of Yerevan. Mariam, a 20-year-old psychology student, was diagnosed with TB in 2009. She insisted on showing her face in the film. For her, TB is like any other disease, and the stigma is unwarranted. Having spent many hours on the internet, Mariam says she knows everything there is to know about TB. Tragically, she also knows the avoidable circumstances in which she contracted the disease. At first, Mariam went on an ordinary course of TB treatment, but having failed to respond to the drugs, she was diagnosed with the drug-resistant strain. In December 2009, she started the 16-drug-per-day regime. Ten days later, unable to cope with the side effects, she gave up. She contemplated going to Germany, where she thought the treatment might be less harsh. But her Armenian doctor, Batshik Vartanian, wasn't prepared to give up. She 
Առաջի մարդն էր, որ ասեց, որ ես կեզ խոսք եմ տալիս, որ դու հարյուր տոքոսով կպուրվեր։ Իրենց շատ շատ դժվար էր համոզել է, շատ դժվար էր համոզել է, կանի որ ինքը շատ հուսահատ էր, շատ, ինքը մտացում էր, որ արտասաման մնարավոր է վիրահատել, վիրահատական ճանապարով կատարել է այդ ամեն ինչը, ինքը չեր պատկերասնում, � Չիշտ է, ինքը խմելու հետ կավված դեղերի մի քիչ դժվար էր, բայց դա ընթացիք հաղթահարեցին։ In July 2010, Mariam started taking the drugs again. With just over a year to go, she's responding well to the treatment. She says she'll definitely continue and will go on to write her master's thesis on the psychological effects of TB. She still dreads the drugs, but has found a way to combat their side effects by trying to confront the disease. Ինձ մի անգամ ասեցին, դու սկսել ես ընկերություն անել տուբերկուլոզի հետ։ Հա, երևի տա այդպես է, ես հիմա ընկերություն եմ անում տուբերկուլոզի հետ, բայդ ոչ թե ընկերություն եմ անում որ լամնա ինձ է, այլ ես իրան համոզու� Back in Abovian Hospital, 57-year-old Vazgen Hakopian's story is very different. Dr. Shahidul Islam is visiting Vazgen in intensive care. Vazgen has had TB since 1998 and been treated several times before joining the MSF program in 2009. He's never shied from taking the drugs, but they failed him by attacking his liver and leaving him with hepatitis C. As a result, the doctors were forced to stop treating him nine months ago. We tried during the treatment process, stop, start treatment again. Then finally, the condition was like that. If we continue treatment with this severe hepatotoxic drug, uh, his condition might worse even. <laughs> <laughs> Vazgan didn't return home to his grandchildren. Six days after this interview, he died. Dr. Shaidul is devastated by the outcome. For me, my personal opinion, if I get infected, maybe I will not go for this treatment. Rather, I will die. Because it's too much. It's too much. I, I can feel for the patient. I can feel for the patient. Two years drug, minimum. If you have side effect, you need to take some side effect drug. Side effect drugs also have additional side effect. But as a doctor, uh, I try to always convince them, this is your health, you have to work on it, you have to, we can help you only, but drugs you need to take. 27-year-old Armianka, not her real name, started losing weight when her baby was just a year old. She went from 86 kilos to 39. Her husband called Armianka's mother, demanding she should take her daughter away, describing her as the corpse. Her mother took her to a hospital, where she was diagnosed as another victim of drug-resistant TB. Her baby was taken from her and hidden. For the past year, she's received the 16-drug-a-day treatment, and her weight has gone up to 69 kilos. Armianka urges other patients to never give up. <laughs> Ես դժվար տաս ամիս եմ անձկացրել, տաս ամիս, դժվար պրոցեսում եմ աղե, բայց եսօր չեմ հիշում, ոչ թե չեմ հիշում, չեմ ուզում հիշեմ այդ անձած որերս, որտև են հիմա ենքան շատ լավ եմ, շատ շատ լավ, որ չեմ էլ պատկերասնում, 
MSF says the latest statistics from Armenia indicate a 50% cure rate. 40% of either given up treatment or it's failing. The mortality rate is about 10%. Dr. Kashavji says while there is some research being done, it's simply not enough. TB is a global threat. It's not TB at the door of Europe. I think it's TB, I mean, it's TB in Europe. The, you know, the, the, the Russian Federation, countries like Bulgaria, Moldova, Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, a lot of places have TB. I mean, sadly, the fact of the matter is that, that if you want private initiatives to really pursue this, or, or private for-profit initiatives, there has to be a market and that market has to be profitable. And this is a disease that it affects mostly the world's poor. And for Europe and the rest of the world, there's more bad news. A new resistant strain called XDRTB has appeared, and it's untreatable. WHO says there are 40,000 recorded cases of XDRTB a year in the world. If it gets a strong foothold in the rich countries, Dr. Kashavji's desire for TB to get the attention it deserves may just be about to happen.